talk to us a little bit about, first and foremost, what you heard from Chinese leadership today. A really tough stance, finally, seemingly, that they've decided to fight fire with fire in some way. Yeah, I think it's not surprising. Um, this, this, um, this sort of rhetoric has been, Xi Jinping has been very careful not to use this, this uh, fairly straightforward rhetoric and uh, and calling, uh, you know, calling out the the the, the, the U.S. policy on China. Um, so it's not surprising. It's come on the heels, of course, of the balloon incident, um, the cancellation of Secretary Blinken's visit to China, and then a whole host of U.S. actions, um, export controls, um, and other other restrictions on Chinese technology acquisition. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we've had uh, Congress um, the, the 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 hearings last week that kick off a season of hearings with the House Select Committee. Uh, on China, for example, which, you know, use some pretty harsh rhetoric. So it's not surprising to see China uh, push back a bit on this, um, but it is unusual for Xi to use such strong language. Before we get into the tit for tat and perhaps what's happening in terms of privacy here in the U.S., I'm interested in what you made of the shakeup when it comes to trying to ensure AI, particularly chip making, is front and center for China, that they don't somehow lose out despite these trade embargoes and and issues that are put on hold in terms of getting hold and access to certain U.S. technologies. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think the restructuring that we're seeing coming out of the NPC, and of course it's it's early days here, it reflects to some degree in the technology sector this recognition that the U.S. is is putting increasing pressure on, uh, on key priorities for Beijing, like advanced computing. So we've seen the U.S. take action, for example, on export controls, and there'll probably be some restrictions on outbound investment. So I think China is is still grappling with the, the full implications of that, um, and there'll be a lot of focus on domestic investment in these key hard and core technology sectors, for example, like semiconductors and artificial intelligence. Um, but I think that that Beijing is really is really struggling to figure out a way uh, to, to to invest, keep investing in its domestic industry, and push back probably at some point on some of these restrictions we're seeing um, the U.S. erect around China's companies' access, access to critical technology. Paul, as we came on air about 30 minutes ago, a headline hit the Bloomberg terminal, a news story. Xi's frustration at Biden grows with warning of conflict. And it talks about how a lot of the communications coming from the new foreign minister, uh, Gang, but actually... Xi himself is under a lot of pressure domestically with the economy having to pivot policy to be supportive of industries that they have been cracking down on for a number of years now. How does he manage that process to your mind? It's a good question. It's very complicated. I think at one level, uh, coming out of the zero COVID um, restrictions, China has sort of pivoted in the economic and social sphere to show that it's open for business. And so part of the game is to show foreign investors uh, and businesses that China is sort of back on track after after some difficult a difficult period of zero COVID lockdown. So that's one issue. But at the same time, uh, China is facing the uh, U.S. restrictions on technology and also, of course, uh, concerns around China's uh, continued support for Moscow um, and talk in Washington uh, and in European capitals about the potential for sanctions. So as 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 C surveys the landscape here, it's. It's opening up and, uh, and, and, and trying to, to portray business as usual, but China's facing a lot of uh, pressure, outside pressure, um, that's going to push against that. How successful, to your mind, has China been in leveraging some of the U.S. Uh, partners and allies in, in getting around this, this technological blockade? You know, it seems as if the U.S. is convincing most of the Western world to go along with it. Uh, that's a, very much a work in progress. It's tricky because uh, in some areas like export controls, of course, there have been intense negotiations uh, between the Dutch government and the Japanese government about aligning with some of the tough controls that the U.S. put on in October. But with all these kinds of uh, collaborations between allies that the U.S. is trying to, to align uh, to, to contain or constrain China in some of these technology areas, the devil really is in the details. Um, and it can be tricky to get, uh, you know, countries that may have similar, may not have similar kinds of export controls or investment restrictions to go along with this. So it's going to, it's very much a work in progress. But yes, clearly China is very concerned about this and is working overtime to try to uh, to push, for example, for better relations with with Europe, um, and and try to sort of drive a wedge between the U.S. and Europe on some of these issues. Talking of relations with Europe. 
ByteDance CEO has been out there trying to woo in many ways European regulators, same as they have been here in the United States. But different tactics being taken on at the moment, the EU seems to be more inclined to listen to how ByteDance might be able to put in place restrictions to data flow from TikTok use. Just talk to us about the data, the privacy argument that's going on here in the US vis-a-vis -vis China. Yeah, and obviously TikTok is sort of the poster boy for this. So TikTok has been very uh, aggressive uh, as part of its uh, negotiations with the US government that have gone on for about two years now and stalled to be more public about what the kinds of uh, uh, procedures is putting in place to protect U.S. citizen data. So over the last month, yes, the TikTok CEO has been very outspoken uh, in discussing all the measures they're taking, which are pretty considerable. They spent something like $1.5 billion to architect a sort of U.S. enclave that protects mm. user data and protects against uh, things like censorship and things like, and they're also allowing review, for example, of their AI algorithm. Um, so, they, But they have a tall order to convince the U.S. Congress and others uh, in, in the Biden administration that they're taking enough steps to protect U.S. US privacy and U.S. user data. The CEO will testify in front of Congress and on March 23rd in front of a, a House committee, and that will be a key indicator of how, uh, how successful uh, TikTok sort of, uh, uh, you know, um, spin is in, in terms of convincing U.S. regulators uh, that they've taken enough steps to protect U.S. user data. The Europeans are also watching this very carefully, of course, to see how that comes out. Paul, with all your knowledge of China and its leadership, are you convinced? Well, I've actually I've seen the um, I've seen the the, the 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 TikTok proposal, and it looks to me like it's pretty it's pretty tough. It, it's it's it, they they decided not to contest um, the national security concerns that the U.S. government was 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 putting forward, and so they've architected this system using a lot of uh, of a very capable cybersecurity and other data privacy experts to try to address those concerns head on. So at least from what I've seen, again, it's 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 difficult to know the full details, but from what I've seen them present, it looks like it's it's a pretty uh, serious effort to, to address the concerns, and they spent a lot of money on this. I mean, $1.5 billion, and they estimate it'll take about a billion dollars to run that enclave. And so I think that, you know, that's that's I don't know any other social media company that's taken those kinds of actions uh, to try to address head on uh, those concerns around uh, data privacy and, and, and user user data privacy. So it's a pretty impressive effort, at least so far.